Well, all right, here we go. This is episode 22 of the Bomb City Podcast. This is my interview with RJ Diaz out in Newark, California. RJ is a really talented custom car builder, and he recently started his own business, RJ's Hydraulics out in Newark, doing hydraulics, custom fabrication, and custom work. And I was really excited to get a chance to talk to him. RJ is one of the guys that bridged the gap between traditional low riding and traditional customs. So it was a lot of fun to sit down and talk with him and hear uh, his background and how he got to some of the decisions that he made on cars, including one you guys might know, his 73 Riviera, the mothership. It's a lot of fun. I hope you guys dig it. Uh, thank you so much for listening and thank you, RJ, for your time. Here it is. You got to be careful with me because I can, I'll go on about one subject do forever. Makes I'm not a big talker, me. but yeah, let me know. So this way you can hit those other topics, you know? Sure. Yeah. I, I definitely wanted to get like up to, to what you're doing today with cars, but I also know, um, I know your, your family's got like a pretty rich Bay area car history. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No, well, not, er not the whole family, but my pops is just like. You know, he started it, yeah. kind of. You know, he, he's been around for a long time. But to him, it was just like growing up. You know, it was like nothing. To him, it wasn't like, you know, you talk to him now about it, and you're like, oh, man, like, why don't you have that car anymore? That's like the greatest car ever. And he just like, <laughs> no, it was just a car. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you know, I was telling somebody that the other day about, we were talking about, you know, um, like if I... Like, they, they were talking about my Rivy, like, you know, and they were like, oh, you know, your kids might think, like, hey, you know, you sold your Rivy. Yeah. And, you know, they, they might say, like, wow, I kind of wish you still had it. Why did you sell it? Like, I can't believe it. Sometimes people have more love, like, uh, uh, that weren't there, you know, yeah. at the moment. That, you know, they, they kind of live in the fantasy land of wanting to be back wherever you were, like, the 50s or whatever, the 60s, 70s. They want to relive your youth because they see this picture that you painted or whatever that was like so great. Yeah. But to you, you were just living at the time, right? Sure. Like, you know, getting rid of it or selling it or doing something like that. It, you didn't think twice about it. Like to you, it was just your car. You didn't, and you have fun in it, but you, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, you, you're ready to move on and have fun with another car. Like, it, 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 well, you weren't that attached to it. Like some people perceive it because they hear yeah. the stories you know what i mean like man, you, you know that guy was really attached to that car well in reality he probably maybe he really wasn't you know yeah, what i mean for sure like it was just what you were doing at the time it's easier to look back when you know how it ends and be like oh yeah he could have done that differently like a, uh, my wife josie's first car was a 73 impala she got it when she was like 14 or so yeah yeah, so her mom started driving. She didn't have a driver's license. Yeah. And when Josie was old enough to drive, her mom traded her buying the 57 to trade for the Impala. Yeah. So we had the car for a long time and sort of ran it into the ground. Like, no one had money to fix it up. And uh, it went to this guy who built it into a donk. Like, it's pretty cool now. It's like a big 20-something inch wheel on it. And uh, in retrospect, like, oh, man, maybe we should have hung on to it. But then you think, like, no, we tripped over that car for years. Just sitting yeah, in the yeah, yard. It yeah. was getting worse. Yeah, we weren't yeah. doing anything to it. It's, yeah. yeah. That's just like, I, I feel like people will do that, you know, like, uh, oh man, there's this like super bad hot rod that won the Grand National or something and blah, blah, you know, like it was this, and then like you could go back and like, you know, somebody might be like, oh, I want to restore it and I want to present it to the guy who owned it as like a gift or something and like and then you then they do it and like let's say it's on camera or something and then the guy's like reaction is just kind of like uh like whatever yeah you know what i mean because like like it's not a big deal he's not like dropping tears or anything because he was he, he already lived that part of his life you know what i mean totally yeah like it's it's like that's what i mean like when i mention it to my pops or, or guys you know i have a friend that you know, my dad had this car, a uh, new in 75, and it was a Caprice, like a 76 Caprice. He bought it in 75, and um, he ordered it the way he wanted it, black on black, with the sunroof. It, the, the way everybody more or less wants them now. It's like the staple of the 70s lowrider, right? He went down, you know, his first job, you know, saved enough money, went out and bought the car. And then, um, you know, he did what he did to it, put wheels on it, put hydraulics in it. He's having a good time for 1976, 75, right? Yeah. And uh, I have friends that are really, really like, 
Well, to me, it's my father. So for one, I kind of don't think twice about it. I mean, I do. I recognize that he was there and he was doing this stuff in the beginning. Yeah. But like my friends are like, wow, that's like like my like Mickey Mouse is my dad or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they're just like, oh, shit. Like, really? You know, and then yeah. you kind of don't really get you don't feel it like that. And so they'll approach him with questions like, oh, you know, don't you wish you had that car still or whatever? And he'll just go like, no, nah. I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah, it was, go you know, I, I owned it and then we did what we did and it was fun. And it's gone. You know, he, you know, life kept going on. You know, family got important. Uh, yeah. Kids, work, you know, whatever. Right. You know, just keeps going. So I kind of feel the same way about some of the cars I've owned. You know, I've never never really grown attached to anything because I've always wanted to, to be able to, to do another one, do more. You know, for me, the pleasure in it is, is to continue to build another car. Like, like I have more fun being in the shop and creating it and I enjoy driving them and showing them off, but then that kind of burns off and it's like, okay, what's next? Right. It's always for me, it's like, what's next? I always want to keep advancing, you know, keep growing. Right. You know, but so I, I've never really, yeah, it's, it's weird how people perceive sometimes things that you have, you know, or did yeah. as something greater. But I mean, I guess because we're the builders or we're the painters or we're the fabricators or we don't approach it like that, right? We're just doing it because we're, we're doing it for the love of, right. for our own, for us. You know, we're, you know, I only do this because I love it. I don't do it because no, I don't. I don't take pictures hardly. I don't write shit down because to me, it's like, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a first person. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm doing it. It's like, what do I need to write down for? I'll do it again. You know, I don't think about uh, other people. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, you know, it's weird, but yeah. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm the worst with, with getting rid of stuff. I hang on. I still have my first car. Yeah. Still broken down in the driveway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't get rid of anything. Yeah, I I got pictures of mine, but I don't have I don't have I have my first car. That's yeah. actually a long lie about that, yeah. But that's cause uh that's probably cause it's not done yet. <laughs> now, um when I was sixteen my dad bought me that uh, you know, he, he had this nineteen sixty old Camino and I don't know if you've ever seen it. That um, sounds really seen familiar. Some photos of it. Um but it was like a it was handed down to him through through my grandfather or whatever as a probably as a car that my dad really didn't even want but it was just like here you go this is what you have and he made the best of it right but it's a 60 l camino it's like a copper color it's got like kind of flames on it of the era you know like the watson kind of the the, the fat flames with the long tails you know that that look that perfect you know really to me maybe because i grew up around it more or less like example like that you know um but uh he got it he put it together probably took him years it was his first car drove it in primer fixed it as he went i think he didn't really finish it till probably like 1980 or 81 or something right and um so he showed it went to the roadster show things like that had full custom interior paint um you know engine was clean uh it, it, it went through the eras of being a low rider. It had true spokes. It had white wall, 520 inch tires, uh, you know, hydraulics. And then it went to when the 80s came in. It was like, okay, took the hydraulics out, uh, like wide 10 inch star wires with like uh, white letter raised tires, kind of like that look, you know? Mm -hmm. And and then that, that's where it like stopped. And then he got out of it. He got other cars or whatever. And it kind of like frozen time right there at, at that era, you know. And so then when he was, um, when I was becoming of age, he was like, oh, you know, do you want this car? And I, and I was like, nah, I kind of didn't like the car. I mean, I've seen the car my sure. whole lot, youth, and I would clean it. And I would, honestly, I would dream about being in it, driving it, taking it to school. And um, I never really, when it came time, he was like, hey, you know, you want to, you know, this, you want this car, you know, or you want another car when it, you know, I was working for him a lot of summers. He, he does, he does concrete work and, um, I would work a lot of summers with him. Well, shoot forever almost. And, uh, 
he would uh he told me okay well when it's time i'll get you a car or you want this car and um so i didn't like it basically i was like this car is weird all my friends have like impalas and and I, mean, I know this is an El Camino. It's a 1960, but it looks like the Batmobile. It's kind of long, and it it's a truck, and it's not a truck. It's a car. I was like, nah. Uh, at the time, I was I was always in the cars, you know. And um, a friend of mine, a family friend of mine, took us took me down to L.A. to a show when I was like 15, and it was um, the Azalea Car Show. It was in uh, it was like at a park, and um, they would do like this big bomb. It was a big bomb event. They had like all the 1930s to 50s cars. There was like, they were everywhere. There's, you know, a couple hundred of them. And then the guys with the low riders would come out. The guys with the mini trucks. I mean, everything. It was a good show. It was one day only. And they would, I mean, some guys would come in and set their cars like if it was an indoor show in hours time. You know, like it was a big deal. Anyway, he took me down there to go see it. And uh, I got to meet, like, a bunch of people that he knew, like Joe Epstein, these guys that build bombs. Um, we kind of went around L.A., and I, I got to meet all the friends that he knew. And uh, when I came back, basically, I was, like, I was, like, converted. I was, yeah. like, oh, I want a bomb, right? You know, like, that's it. I seen the light. You know what I mean? Like, so I wanted, like, a Bel Air, like a 54 Chevy at the time. And uh, so then when... Like I said, I was about 15 and I was getting ready to get a car or whatever. My license, my pops was like, well, you don't want the El Camino. We'll, we'll find you a 54. You know, that's what you want. I'm like, yeah. So then uh, he, he, we get, we end up fine. We look at a few and there's this one that was like a, a guy I had that was in a barn and then the barn caught fire. And at the time I didn't know a whole lot about the cars, right? My dad's like, yeah, this one's pretty nice. He knew more than I did. He's like, oh, you know, I like this one. Uh, no, nah, I don't like this one. For whatever reason, he chose the one that was in the fire. And I'm, I mean, I'm not paying for it, but I'm always yeah. like, okay, well, yeah, sounds good. Let's do it, right? So he's like, I'm like, why do you want this one? Well, this one particularly had like all the options in the car. So he had already knew this is the car that you're going to want later, whether or not it's more work right now, but it's worth it. You know, it had like power windows power seats and steering, all the options they had in 1954, you know. Other than the car being in a fire, it wasn't really burned. It was kind of crispy on top. I think a, a board or something from the building fell on the roof. It crushed the roof. Mm. So we ended up replacing the roof and doing all that stuff to it. Anyway, that was like my first car, and I still have it because it was a lot of work. I remember <laughs> they, we built like a rotisserie for it. We took a, the body off the frame. You know, he's kind of like, you know, my dad's always been one of those people, you know, um, you're going to do something, you do it right, you do it once, you know, and you do it all the way. So kind of like, okay, well, that's, he kind of instilled that in me, you know, so it's like, okay, we, we took the car apart all the way, you know, we're going to rebuild the whole thing from ground up and uh, but I still have it, you know, because that was my, really my first car. It wasn't my first car that I drove. Yeah. But it was my first car, you know, I, I mean, like, I, it was kind of funny because that car um, took a long time to do. It was a big project. Yeah. So midway, I think when I was like 17 or something, I got a Riviera. My first car was like, my real first car that I drove was a 64 Rivi. And um, at the time, same thing. Um, I didn't like it. I didn't know what it was. It was ugly. It was square. All my friends had Impalas, and um, I was in high school, and uh, a family friend of mine comes around, and he's like, oh, I just bought this car, you know, and I had been working and saving up some cash and stuff. I think I was working at, like, Little Caesars or something, right, or just, you know, high school stuff, and then um, I remember buying it. Well, they, they were like, him, my, my dad and his friends were like, oh, this is a good car, and I'm like, oh, it's kind of weird, and they're like, yeah, but this car isn't a Chevy. This is a Buick. And it has power windows. It has oh, power seats. You know, you can't... That's standard in a Buick. You can't get that in a Chevy. That's You know what I mean? I mean, you do. It's rare. But so I was kind of like, you know, twisting my arm. And I'm kind of like, okay, it's cool. I want something old. I want yeah. something, you know. 
that's ready to run right now. My car is still three, my, my bomb is still three <laughs> years away from being built. And yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to get it. So that was like my first real car. I started driving to school and I was doing like the ROP thing where I was like working on it and, and still driving it. I remember driving it and uh, uh, to high school and it, uh, I airbagged it because I was hanging out with these guys that were doing like mini trucks at mm -hmm. the time. And um, they had like the first, those are the first time I had ever seen airbags. And um, uh, this guy I knew, he was already kind of out of high school, but I knew him. And he, he was like, oh, yeah, this is what you want. You know, we, we can lay your car on the ground or whatever, get it pretty low. So I'm like, okay. And I remember everything was like manual. Like <laughs> there was no electric like switches. There was no mm -hmm. solenoids. Everything was like analog gauges, like quarter inch line, hella slow. Yeah. We didn't, I didn't even have a compressor. I think I had like a five gallon tank mm -hmm. that I would fill up at home and it would last me like all day. And then I'd go back. You know, I had to count how many times I could raise and lower my car before the tank was empty. But, um, so that was my first car. And then, uh, I never even painted it. I actually just drove it. Like it was at high school, you know, I ended up selling it, but that was, that was the first time that got me into doing suspension work. That guy like more or less turned me on to it and taught me. Yeah. So it was, it was air ride that I did first back then. I never really messed with hydraulics. I seen people that had them, but I was in the air ride more than anything, yeah. I think. And then um, the whole hydraulic thing <clears throat> just kind of started, you know, out of like somebody asking me, do you think you can do it? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I think I can do it. You know, I'm, you just, it's mechanical. I can do anything mechanical. So then I'm like, uh, so yeah, we did. I think it was Damien's car was the first car I did. He had a 54 Chevy. It was like a black primer. It had a Carson top. And it uh, had like green seaweed flames on it. And, I'm trying to, trying yeah. to picture it. I'm sure I've seen the other of it before. <clears throat> yeah. He, uh, he had had it. And um, he wanted to do kind of like a 70s thing to it. Even though it was a custom. You know, like more or less when he got it. It had the skirts and it had the, the big white wall tires. The Carson top was already built. The Royal Joker guys, I, I don't know who owned it. I think it was Carlos's car. And then, or maybe even Ben's car first and then Carlos's car. And uh, Damien ended up getting it off one of them way before he was even in the club. Yeah. And uh, I remember he brought it. He was like, hey, I want to put true spokes on it. And, you know, I want to I put hydraulics in it. And I'm like, man, this is why you know it's kind of like a one of those it's a it's a custom yeah. but it worked out good because what he was searching for was that look of where like more or less um somebody like somebody uh, uh buying like let's say like a custom in like the 70s mm -hmm. and but you want to have a low rider you know so yeah. when if you if you found like an old custom you were like halfway there, you know, but it really wasn't quite a low rider. But all you had to do was put the low rider wheels and put some hydraulics, and it was right. kind of instantly like a low rider. Like a, what's the, the Lopez Merc? Is that what I'm thinking? Yeah, it? yeah, pretty much like that, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how that that's what happened. Whatever's cool at the time, they right. decide, hey, let's put this on, and and it'll 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 fit. We'll be in. We'll be able to go cruising, and we won't look like we were. We were, you know, we're 10, 20 years ago, we built this car. It looks like yeah. we just built it or whatever, right? So then Damon added the flames on it and it looked, it was, it was a pretty sick car. It looked really good, you know, even till today's standards, because I feel like shit right now, if that car was out in the way, it, the way it was, it, it would be like, that's what people were trying to build now, yeah. you know, and he did it then. And so anyways, that was like the first car I think I actually got my hands on the hydraulics and, and put them in and installed them and learned and you know we, I think it, it rode like shit we didn't know what we were doing <laughs> yeah. at the time it was just like I mean we we did everything that you're supposed to do but it just rode like shit it was fucking like rigid as hell it had you know like a, a, a like front coil springs or like maybe two two coil, two turns or three turns they were just like hard as a rock yeah. and it, it was all wrong but you know it, that's just where you start right you know you just right. you know you gotta try it and do it 
Yeah, that was, that was good stuff. Dang, this car. Then I then I did. Let's see. After that, I don't remember what other car I did after that. I think probably my. I don't know if it was my rib or something in between. I can't remember. But I, it might have been the Rivy. I don't know. I did so many. The the the, the seventy three. Yeah, the seventy three. The mothership. Yeah. Yeah. When when did you get that? I bought that in. Uh, I think it was. I don't know. Two was it in? Uh, let's see. What year was that? Five. Probably, probably like. I think two thousand nine. Maybe. Okay. No, no, way before that. It was probably right around oh five oh six. I think. Yeah, I had I had a car that I sold. And I can't remember what it was. I had so many cars, dude. I had the worst memory too. But I was at Turtlock Swap Meet and um I had saw that car and it was there and I was I think I was shopping. I don't think I was selling. I usually sell there. But um I think I was just out like shopping and I had a pocket full of money and I was like, Man, like uh this guy had brought in this pretty clean car out of Nevada or Reno or something. And um I was like, wow, that's like would make the perfect seventies lowrider, right? Mm-hmm. Like those cars are like that. To me, they've always been the car. Like anything seventies, that's what yeah. I mean, if anybody that knows me knows that that's what I've always liked. Loves the luxury cars. Um and that's just because growing up, you know, like I said, my dad was low riding in seventy six, that you know, or seventy five, six, probably even earlier. But when I was a kid, those were the cars that would show up to my house. Those were the cars that would come. And uh, I remember where we lived, where I grew up, there was um, no, there wasn't um, city sidewalks yet. They had like the street, like the street in the middle. Mm-hmm. Then there was like gravel. And then you'd have your house and your driveway, yeah. you know. But I remember as a kid on Saturdays and Sundays, a lot of guys would come. They'd bring their cars to my dad and he would uh, like heat the springs on them and lower them. Or he maybe even put hydraulics in them because that's, he's, you know, more or less did a lot what I did, but he did it at home. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I remember seeing those cars and they would come and they wouldn't even pull into the the gravel. You know, they were so clean and it was like the weekend and then they'd have them like with hydraulics and they'd pull up on in that street we lived on and they would like just lay them out on, on that area and they'd get out of the car. They don't care. If they're blocking traffic or what, they would just come talk to my dad and visit. But sometimes there'd be one, sometimes it'd be three or four, you know, in a line. Anyway, that's, those are the cars that like, as a kid, I'm out there playing, you know, I didn't pay attention. I wasn't like running after them. I'm doing my own thing. I'm a kid, but that's just the the photo that I see in my head that that's a lowrider. That's the staple of a lowrider at that time. That's what I grew up. You know, that's some of the first ones I seen, you know. I mean, mind you, 64s and and uh, 59s, all those Impalas, those are all lowriders too. But uh, I, for whatever reason, the ones that stand out in my head are the luxury ones, the Lincolns and the Caprice Classics and the, and the later Impalas and stuff like that, you know. And um, so uh, that's kind of just where... To me, when I was, it was time that I felt it was time for me to build one, like I knew, okay, I want to build a, a Link 70s car. And that Rivy just kind of fell into place. I was just there at the swap meet. I knew those were the cars. My dad's, a couple of his friends had them. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's just like really for that era, it has the most exotic body style. Like, really, it's like two cars. It's like a. It's like a Camaro in the back, and it's like a, it's like a long ass Lincoln in the front. It's it, but it but it has a lot of style, right? And so, um, like I said before, uh, growing up, my dad had always he he had a lot of stuff, and he would save it. You know, growing up, I'd go into my like our shed. We had a shed in the back, and um, we had like an attic, and um, I used to. My dad was like, you know, I had like tons of bicycles. I started doing Schwinn bicycles when I was a kid. But my dad was into them too. He saved them for me or whatever, right? And when he would see something good, when he was in his youth, he'd keep it. So I'd go through these sheds to get the bike parts. 
and I've always pushed like, you know, these old two spoke wheels out of the way. I'd move like hydraulic pumps out of my way. There was always chain steering wheels and donut steering wheels nailed on to the rafters and shit like that. But they were just there being collected. You know, it was my dad's stuff. Never really paid much attention to it, right? Like, I was just getting the bike shit, you know? <laughs> I was in there for the Schwinns, you know? Yes. And, um, but he's all, he always kept everything. He never got rid of anything, right? So, um, when I, like, I knew that that stuff obviously one day would be mine if he was never going to use it, right? So, I mean, that's why we keep stuff. We keep it for our kids or whatever, right? So, um, when I saw that car, I kind of had already built that car in my head the moment I seen it. I knew exactly where to go for the parts, and I knew exactly who had them all. And it would all be era correct because all that shit was like original. And yeah. he kept really good care of his stuff. It wasn't like nothing was like old or sat in the rain. This, you know, he took care of everything he's always had, you know. And um, so uh, when I seen the car, I was like, okay, I'm going to get it. And then I brought it home. It was pretty clean. Um, and then I lifted it. I didn't get actually the hydraulics. I didn't get from him. I just, I, I found a set that I had or I bought. And then the, the wheels though, that were on the car, I got from him and they had the original tires that were still on them yeah. from, they were like original 520 tires from the seventies premium sportways. And, um, they were kind of yellowed and they were, you know, old or whatever. But they were perfect for me. To me, they were perfect. And I was just like, so um, I did the car once with the factory paint, you know, like round, we call it round one. Round one was like that, drove it. And I, I kind of wish I would have left it like that, honestly. But um, I, and then I, I base coated it because then I had this idea, like, I was like, well, you know, it, it honestly, the car, when I first finished it, it looked like you pulled it out of some guy's garage that he mm. built it and and parked it in there and his mom's garage or something and went to jail. And when he came back out, it was still sitting there the same way. That's how mm. it looked. And I should have left it that way. Cause it looked like, like a time capsule. The paint was all lacquer checked, but it was a factory paint. The car had like 40,000 original miles on it. Wow. It was really low, no tears in the interior. It had like Paisley cloth interior. It was like super nice. Um, it wasn't exactly the color I wanted, but it ended up being okay. I mean, you don't, when, you know, you can't pick and choose colors when it comes to cars like that. Right. Um, but so then I base coated it. I remember one summer I wanted to go cause the paint was like checking. And so I said, well, you know, we go to Paso. We're into this whole, like this like scene where the cars are base coated and stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'll just base this out and it'll be a seventies low rider, but it'll be a base car. You know, so I based it one summer like root beer brown, and then I had um, then I had a, a, a I wanted to do since it's, since I'm from like the East Bay and I wanted to do something that's kind of like East Bay period like not period correct but East Bay like as if you, you know I had it striped and I wanted it striped in Tommy the Greek style striping, mm -hmm. even though it's not a hot rod, even though it's not from the fifties. But that's not necessarily the point. The point is, is that if you're from the East Bay and you don't, in the old days, if you didn't travel, if you like to San Jose or to Frisco or wherever else that where you didn't know, you only you only like did what you know, right? right. So if there was a guy up on East Fourteenth that did striping, you would just go to that guy, right? right. You you didn't know any better, like you. That's just what you know. So I don't care if you're a low rider or a hot rider or or even probably like a, a muscle car from like the 70s. You go to where you know, and then you get that guy's style, right? Because that's what he does. You know, even if you ask him, hey, I want you to make it look like a lowrider. Uh, well, he's going to say, well, I'm, I don't know. I don't do that. But I'm going to give you what I know, right? So I wanted this Tommy the Greek style striping because it's just something I picked. But I, so I had him put like a scallop on the side that Tommy the Greek would done. I had teardrops on it, like Tommy the Greek style, up front, up back. And then on like the sail panel, I had him do like three Tommy the Greek style thing, teardrops. But anyways, a lot of people don't really probably understand it or get it. 
right? Sure. But that was the whole point behind it. So then I took it to uh, Paso Robles. We went, we went to Paso one year in it like that. And uh, um, I think it was my wife was like pregnant with my first, with my first son. It was a long trip because uh, I remember because she was pregnant and it had hydraulics and she was just like this car rides like shit. And I remember her moving from the back seat to the front seat, trying to get out of the sun because the sun was beating on her. It was, but I, I mean I was loving it. I had a great time. <laughs> but um, yeah. So then uh, yeah, that car just it was like. I think that's what kind of started it all for me as far as low rider, you know these this whole low rider thing that i'm kind of you know pursuing or into now was that car just being you know i just did it because i wanted to do one i mean i love all kinds of cars i've, I've built choppers I've, i like low riders i've had customs i've chopped the roofs on cars but that car was just the one that i wanted to do to get it out of my system but it's kind of weird because it it just kind of stuck, you know? So, um... Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, to me, and maybe it's just because I grew up in the Bay Area, but, like, the the 73, when it was in the, the suede yeah. version, they had a junior's car. Yeah, that was about the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. Those two were, like, the bridge from customs to lowriders. For me, it was like, yeah. oh, I get it now. I understand that. Yeah. I didn't really get, like, 70 lowriders. It just wasn't something I grew up around. But your <laughs> right. car was like, yeah. I yeah. understand this as a custom. I, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And now it's, like, now it's not controversial yeah. at all to talk about, like, the primer lowrider. Or, no. Or no. to park a lowrider next that. to a hot rod. Yeah. But 2005 or so it was. Like, yeah. you, you couldn't talk about lowriders on the ham back then. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's weird. And now everybody wants a set of Supremes and yeah. a, 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 a one-inch white wall tire, huh? Right. Yeah. No, I, I know, and I think that's what I wanted to do with it, was I wanted to show people that, that uh, um, like, when I went to Paso, because, you, you know, Paso's always been a, a, a thing about, like, who can come up with the next best, yeah. not new thing, but the next best old thing that's new right? right if that makes any sense right, right and um like i've always heard stories about you know javier and his brother uh um jose when they 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 were honestly the first guys to take a hot rod there i don't know if you've I, heard that story javier that purple murk that he had yeah that, yeah that was like one of the first like uh, yeah they were like the first rat rod right yeah yeah pretty much they was like the first <laughs> rat the, two, the first couple of guys that that looked like a, a a pair of uh pharaohs that came out of like from from uh, american right. graffiti right show up in this the roof's chopped off the seats uh, on their the frames on their seats are cut off so they're sitting like really low you know but that was the murk and then but the hot rod see yeah. It was a West Coast custom show, right? But then it was the, their hot rod that they brought was the one that kind of changed the game because next thing you know, all of a sudden, these guys from down south show up and they're all shifters and they show up with five, six rat rod, hot rods, you know? Mm -hmm. Hot rods that are um, primered, more or less your your teenage builds from the 50s, stuff like that, right? Right. And I don't really like to call them rat rods, but, sure. well, the ship you know. Was, I think Alex can own it, though. Didn't he? Yeah. He invented the word. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I guess you're that. probably right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let him say it, though, yeah. you know. But, um, so, it, it, I mean, that just comes from what? Like, rat bikes, right? If you were ever in the Harleys yeah. or the whole motorcycle scene or know anything about them, right? right? Rat bikes were like those... Uh, vintage like bikes that guys would just throw a bunch of polished yeah. shit on and then they would drive it from here to south dakota and they, they wore fucking fuzzy hats and they, they're just like big bearded guys right you, you know rat bikes are yeah. and i think that's where it comes from it's like a, a pile of just a bunch of stuff it had nothing to do with if you don't know it's, it's not a rat rod because it's rotted or it's ratty it, it's actually, I think it comes from that whole motorcycle sure. thing. I think it's it's you know? an effective name, but it's become like a real pejorative, like to say, yeah, oh, it's yeah. a rat rod. It's like yeah. a real negative thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it, no. it meant something different then. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so what were we talking about? Uh, uh, Paso. And... Yeah, so Paso. And then, uh, so anyways, yeah. So, you know, Javi and his brother kind of 
more or less, they have this really good story about how they pull up in the hot rod and you know how they do that parade mm -hmm. where they kind of shut down the street. And then, so they jump in this parade and it's all Mercs and customs and the West coast custom thing. Right. And they kind of like hear the commentator, like making like, well, they don't even know what to say. <laughs> we got these two crazy guys in this hot rod. And so anyways, my point of the story is that like, okay, so they took it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Right. So now Paso was, okay, bam. Now we have Paso for the next four years is all hot rods. I mean, you got your customs, but the cool thing is to show up with, a, with an old hot rod, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're sort of, sort of like, uh, 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 not the outcast, but you know, you're kind of like, you're bringing the new scene. Right. So that was the whole point of me doing the primered low rider, right? Okay, so I wanted to show up with a low rider that was in primer, to just basically, if I would have showed up in a lowrider that was custom painted or that was factory paint, well, they might have just looked at me as like some local that was there to enjoy his weekend and pull up and kind of like maybe, you know, join in on the fun, right? But the way I felt like when I took it, when I primer the car, that kind of like, okay, now it's it, it kind of like brought it into the whole base car thing. So now it looks like it kind of fits in, but at the same time, it's a seventies car and it's got spokes and it's got hydraulics, but it does have, you know, this Tommy, the Greek style striping, whatever. Right. So that was, that was kind of the point of, of it being based and maybe the trying to, trying to transition people and get them to think, about these cars, you know, that yeah. about those cars, you know, the 70s cars or low riders in general. I mean, I guess you could have did it with the 64 and Paul or something, but I don't think that would have stood out as much, you know, because, um, but the Rivia is definitely a good car because like I said before, the body is like, it's not like any other. It's not yeah. just this giant square boat. It, it has, it has more style to it, you know? I think, Along the same lines with with the, with Junior's car, yeah. it wouldn't have been the same impact if it was like a '64 Impala. The exactly. fact that it was a, a Wildcat, it's like it's a what? A pure yeah. what? Like yeah. I didn't even consider that as a. Yeah, that was my car. I actually owned that car. Yeah, I, I I bagged it for him. Wow. Yeah, but he bought it from me, and then I bagged it for him, and uh, but yeah, no, I got that. I actually bought that car from Billy Wishart from the Road Zombies. Oh wow! When I was in that club, he had gotten it. He was a high school teacher at the time and uh, a ROP, like automotive high school teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in a yard that they had. And I don't know if it was either there or somebody think donated it to him to fix it, you know, whatever, you know, let the kids learn and, and do things on it. Right. But it had a smashed quarter panel. And so um, actually Billy put a lean cell on it and because, you know, it was donated, well, they ended up. I ended up getting the car or whatever. I bought it from Billy. And then, um, so then I had it for a little while, got it running, you know, did things like that to it. And then, um, I didn't really do anything with, to it, but, um, I got it running and then sold it to junior. I just laughed. Cause it was like, a, we, we tried to go to San Jose and I remember one time to, to go to like a show there back then there was a lot of like, um, you know, they'd have like, like, um, like rockabilly shows and stuff like almost every weekend there'd be one somewhere downtown san jose oakland frisco and we'd go right and we'd all jump in like an old car you know the thing to do is take like an old car right yeah and uh i don't i don't remember what it was but the thing like it was either overheating or something or it was something funny uh behind it but we were all packed inside i think his wife was like he had just met her she had just <laughs> came to this uh, country to like you know, meet him and stuff. And she was just having this, this whole like night where like, I don't even know if we made it. I think we made it, but it probably took us like four hours to make a 30 minute trip or something. You know, like, yeah. like thing was overheating. I think we got a, a flat, I don't know, some caught on fire. I remember <laughs> it was, but those are the shit. That's the yeah. best times, you know, right? those are the best. That's why we do it. You know, you go there and you get there in, in 20 minutes. It's boring. You know, what was the point? But, uh, so yeah, so that, that car, yeah, it was a good car and yeah, they based it and they faded it and that car had a really good look, mm -hmm. you know, a really good look. And 
So the, and then the rib just kind of turned in, snowballed into this car. Like I decided to paint it, you know, I'm like, well, I want to paint it because the body, you know, it's kind of over that whole base coat thing. Yeah. Again, with me, it's always about moving forward and I didn't really want to keep it that way that long. It was just kind of a stepping stone. Right. And, um, so then, uh, I think, uh, I, I had it stripped by a guy. He then I had another guy do the body work, and uh, he was actually a, a friend of mine. He did it through in the summertime. Like um, he was a he was a high school auto body teacher, and then um, his name was Johnny Semino. And then he did the body work with his son, and on their like period off, like during summer, mm -hmm. he didn't really want to get involved in painting it. I told him the car was going to be black, so then he did it like super straight. Yeah. And then, so then, uh, he gave it back to me. Right. And then at the time I didn't have all the money to just go out and put this big paint job on this car. You know, it's expensive. And so I did it in pieces. I had the bodywork done and then I took it back to, him. uh, uh, my dad had a shop at the time and I just stored it there. And then, um, it was pretty much ready to go. It just needed to be wet sanded probably once or twice. He blocked it and then, um, need to be painted. But I think I was undecided on the color. Uh, I knew it was going to go brown because the interior was a, a, a sort of a shade of like a, a gold. And then the, um, the car was already like a brown. So um, I went, a friend, a friend of my dad's had, he was a custom painter. Or not a custom painter, a car painter. So I had him paint it. He was actually like 70, he was 72 years old when he did it. But he's like a really good, been a painter all his life. And so I asked him if he could do it. And he was like, yeah, I'll do it. So, but he's kind of one of those guys, like, he doesn't trust anybody else's work. So he's like, well, I'm going to reblock this car like a couple times. And I'm like, okay, well, do whatever you got to do. But I was told it was ready for paint. Mm -hmm. So he ends up um, doing it. I painted it black with a base, with a black base. And then I used a House of Colors pearl, which is called a Copper Penny. So once you put the pearl, is actually a three-stage paint. When you put the copper pearl over the brown, or the black, I should say, it turns kind of brown. But it's pearl that's making the effect, right? So mm -hmm. it, it was kind of a tough one. We, I remember we, he made me mix like two gallons of the paint. Because he goes, if you ever, if we run out, we have to mix this all at once, right? Mm -hmm. And if, or if you ever wreck it, you have an extra gallon or half a gallon, whatever we don't use. I actually still have the paint to this day, but, um, so we painted it. Unfortunately, when I, when I had that car, the side moldings on the side of the car, it kind of has like a little half inch little side molding, mm -hmm. nothing big. Well, those, they have like a rubber in between the, the stainless and, um, those were kind of chewed up. The rubber was kind of scarred from, uh, people just opening their doors against it or whatnot. Right. So I decided my decision was to couldn't find the pieces to put them back on the car. I mean, I had them, they were in bad shape. So I decided to mold them, right? So I had them taken off. And I think I ended up taking off like some of the Riviera emblems too. Mm -hmm. And so when we painted it, this this root beer, well, this copper penny pearl color, it was kind of just like this big car and it was dark. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, it it had no trim on it. And, it, it, and it, I guess as a custom, or like a sinister style car, it probably looked kind of cool. But to me, I was just like, I, I would looked at it, I looked at it, and I was just kind of like, I just, it, I, I couldn't, I just didn't like it. Okay. You know, it was just too big. The guy did an amazing job for being a car that big, and it was flat, it was super straight, and I, and I told him it was going to be black, and it was close to black, it was like a dark pearl brown, you know? And, um, so, uh, so then I'm like pondering over. I had the car at home. It was already pretty nice. All I had to do was put it back together. But at the time, I think I, like I said, I didn't have the money to really like chrome all the bumpers and stuff like that. I was, I was going to do it in time. So I was just waiting. The car just sat. And, um, at the time, Alex and, um, well, Alex pretty much was doing like a lot of roof jobs on cars. It was like, it was the thing to do. You know, you have a Chevy. Uh, a 50 Chevy or 64 or anything where it has a dividing roof, you know, you flake the roof and you base coat the bottom, you know, that, that was the, the, the style at the time. 
or I guess that's just what people were doing, right? Yeah. And um, I even had a car like that. Before Alex was painting, I had a 54 Chevy um, that I had Freddie Badola do. And he, he it was a black base car with the red flaked roof. And that was like about 1999 or something, 98. I was still living at home at my dad's. I remember doing it there. Anyway, um, so when I, I, I was just thinking about it, so I approached Alex. I said, hey, Alex. Why don't we do uh, my car in with patterns, even though it's already painted? And I said, I don't want to do the roof. I want to do the whole car. Like I know people are doing roofs, but I want to do the whole car. And he's like, oh, I've really never done a whole car. I mean, he, he was doing some at the time. I think he had did uh, that other car, uh, the Cutlass. I can't remember. Oh, Eric's, uh, the Eric's car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of weird. Actually, I did the hydraulics in that car. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Yeah, I did it here. Um, but um, so then I had asked uh, Alex and he was like, yeah, I'm on board. Let's do it. Right. So I told him, I said, dude, I'm not exactly sure what I want, but kind of have an idea. This is, you know, I kind of like collected a bunch of photos of like old cars from the 50s, like like on Rick Hoving's page where it mm -hmm. says like those classic lowriders and stuff. And I was just more or less looking at the tricks of the cars. Excuse me. And uh, I always known that I've liked Watson style panel jobs. And to me, you know, at the time I was kind of like um, getting into the Royal Jokers or hanging out with them. And then Javier was kind of like my mentor a little bit. And he was like, hey, you know, this is this is how I do my cars. And I kind of told him we, we would talk a lot. And I'd say, hey, look, my idea is to... The way you do your cars, you panel them out like with the Watson panel job, but then inside every panel, I want to do a trick from a lowrider. And he's like, yeah, that's perfect. And then I, so then, um, that's pretty much what we did. Uh, you know, I just got Alex on board and then, um, we, we rent, we, he had some shop up in, uh, Hayward or something in the city and, uh, we'd meet there like every Whenever we could, I think we met there like maybe once or twice a week. We kind of weren't doing it like all the time. The car was in a booth and then he'd go in there and he'd lay out some lines. And I told him more or less that I wanted him to start with the panel job, like a Watson style job. Just go over all the body lines. And then inside of that, you know, um, the thing that really gives that car the effect is that I think when you do a Watson job and you want it to look crazy, you just... The more, the more times you keep giving it, like we call it the bumblebee effect, every time you give it another step, it just gets crazier and crazier because it starts to look busier and busier. So uh, I know when we approached the roof, I told them, well, the roof on this car is kind of like the roof and the trunk. It's, it's a fastback type car. Mm -hmm. So I said, whatever you do on the roof, I actually want the roof to be even busier than the sides. So break up the roof a little bit more because it's kind of plain. And so so he broke up the roof a little more. So now the, the roof, it almost looked like a roof job on a car that was a roof job. You know what I mean? Like it had more than just the bottom of the car going on, which was kind of our, our, why we did it. And then uh, more or less, I just let Alex do any... That was kind of my my uh, uh, where I wanted to go with it. I honestly didn't care what he did inside the panels as far as the tricks. I kind of let him pick and choose. Um, and, and I knew I wanted like some lace, but I didn't want a lot of it. I just wanted a little bit. And then um, I knew I wanted like the what I don't know what they call it, but the like uh, laser tape or never the ending line. What do they call endless line? It? Endless tape line. Yeah, 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 yeah. I knew I wanted that somewhere but um so yeah we would just show up and i'd help them you know we were kind of both there the, all the time and then i would just uh either help him mask it or, or you know i'd come in and just see what he was doing and um, you know that kind of paint job sometimes you just kind of like have to um do it as you go you know yeah. you don't really i mean once you have an approach you kind of you know, you're, you're better than not and then you just kind of you know you just go, as, you know, do it as you go, add shit as you go. Um, but it worked out good. Yeah, it was it was a pretty cool car, you know. 
I think it I think it surprised Alex. And for one, I was actually nervous um uh, uh to tell the other guy, the guy Frank, the, the seventeen year old guy that painted it. Yeah. I actually was like he did he worked really hard and the car was like nice. And I never told him or his son about it and um because his son, I know his son. And one day the son asked me, Oh, how's your car? You know, you know, the car my dad painted, mm-hmm. um, and he got it together. And I was like, man, you know, I, um, I did some changes to it. And he was like, <laughs> Oh, is that right? He goes, well, I, I you know, I want to come by one of these days and check it out. He had never even seen what his dad did. He hadn't mm-hmm. seen the finished product. And I was like, well, all right. You know, I kind of like, I was like, well, I don't know how to tell you this, but you know, come by and, and you'll, you know, it's, it's different now. So he came by one day and he's seen it. And actually he was like, I think I told him, I gave him kind of like a heads up. I was like, dude, I, I put some patterns on it and say like how many. And he was like, Oh, okay. And he came and he looked at it and, uh, he liked it. And he actually was thought his dad would like it. Yeah. He was like, dude, I, my dad's going to love this. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, like I, I didn't, I was nervous. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. And then I was like, so, uh, I think after the car was already done, his dad didn't get around here much or anything like that. And then I don't, I don't think he ended up seeing it until it was even at a show or something, which for him, he didn't, he didn't care. He probably painted millions of cars. Right. Yeah. But you know, for me, as far as I know, it was one of my first, my first painted cars. So I didn't, you know, I felt like, you know, I don't like to disrespect people like that or anything like, you know, Covering a man's work is like a, kind of more than talking bad about him, you know. Like it's it's like real life. The words are words, but man, when you when you when you change something, you know, like that's 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 the worst thing you can do, you know. That's not, you know. So, but uh, but anyway, he liked it, and we took it to Grand National, and it did well, and everybody liked it, and it was a good car, you know. I I I shouldn't. I don't, I don't want to say I shouldn't have got rid of it, but um, I don't know. I felt like that when we did it, that car was like, it was kind of a quick car. It was kind of like fast, um, you know, as far as the build. I don't feel like it was going to have a, a much longevity, you know, like as far as the paint. Mm-hmm. So I felt like, uh, you know, like it would only be good to keep it around for a, a little while and then get rid of it. <laughs> you know, but yeah. it just, you know, it was a good, we took it down to bare metal and everything. The car's probably still good to this day, but, you know, I was like, oh shit, you know, this is, this car probably has a good 10 years on it before it starts something happening. You know, we just put so much paint on it. Yeah. I think I cleared that car like, after Alex did the first clear, I brought the car home. Yeah. And then me and my buddy Damien, we sanded that car three times. And then it, we took it to another guy, this guy, Freddy Pena. Uh, he cleared it for me. And then I would drive it because it was only in Fremont about maybe four or five miles from here. And I would drive it to him. He would clear it. I'd bring it back the next day. You know, he'd let it sit overnight. Mm-hmm. We'd sand it because we wanted the flake like all buried. I didn't want, I was picky. I didn't want to feel not one layer of tape. I didn't want to feel not one bump because to me that's, you know, when you look down the side of the car at night or something in the dark, you know, I don't want to see any of the sh- uh, uh, the ripples of the tape lines. That's just how I wanted my stuff. And um, you couldn't. We we put so much clear on that car, man, and sanded it off and put more. And then the final one, I had Alex stripe it. He came back. I called him. He came to my house. We striped it. And then I went back and I cleared it again. I cleared over the striping. Yeah. So... So we, on, on Josie's car, we did sort of the same thing. Like we, we were in a real rush to finish it and we did all the panels on her 57. Yeah. So we, when we finished it the first time, there's no pinstripes on everything. There's rough edges. You could still feel everything with your fingernail, like where the panels were. Yeah. And then it was down, it was out for like a year or so. Then it was finally like, I, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> Sanded it smooth, smooth, well, smooth to me. Mario's probably got a different yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we took it to him to have all the panels striped, and there's probably another two gallons of clear on top yeah, of all that. Yeah. And he buffed it even after that, so you can't feel the pinstripes on it. Right, right, yeah, that's... It still feels like it needs a little bit more. 
Yeah, no, that's the right way. You know, when I judge a paint job, you know, I mean, anybody can, um, you know, anybody can do what any of us do, but like to get to do it like right, I don't want to say right or the way I would like to see it, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't even know if that's right, but the way I'd like to see it is just smooth like glass. I mean, that's the point, you know, like, uh, and, and if you're going to do it, why not do it right? You know, like go all the way and, and make sure it, it looks like glass, you know, because to, to me, the thing about that, at least appreciating someone else's paint job like that, is I know it doesn't take skill to get it smooth. It takes work and it takes dedication and it takes like oh, yeah. nights missed out in the garage, like sanding by moonlight. Like, yeah, yeah. You, I appreciate the struggle it takes to take a car to that level. Well, I can't do it myself yeah. often or like for a long amount of time. Yeah. It's really, yeah. paint skill is one thing, but dedication and just... Uh, yeah work is another thing yeah i mean but if if you like any of us um if you if you have if you have a love and a passion for it it's it's not it's it, you already know that that's what you're gonna do there's no question about it you're not gonna do it half fast and those long days and nights is because you have a vision of what it's gonna be in the end and that vision you're passionate about that vision so you're just going to go until you achieve that. You know what I mean? And it it won't matter. It won't matter if it took you three years to do it. Right? The time, it, it like, you're not going to stop halfway because you got tired. No, you, you know, because you, you, you're you dedicated. You're going you're gonna to go all the way and have this nice product when you're done. And, and then there's a purpose of why you spent all that time, right? Yeah. Like, to do something halfway like that, you know, that in the end, you know, like, uh, what was the point if, if it doesn't come out like yeah. something? Yeah, and I, it's it's hard to find a balance because I also have stuff where I'm like, <laughs> it needs to be perfect, so I'll touch it later when I have time to do that. Yeah. I try yeah. to avoid that, too. Yeah. But well, I, you know, perfect to, to, our, to your standard, yeah. to my standard. It's all different, but as long as it, you're happy with it, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, yeah. So that that was the mothership. Let's Where's see. the car now? Is it still in, in the it's United States? Not well. When I sold it, it went to Texas. Okay. And um, then the guy from Texas kept it for about two years, maybe three. He even wrote me a letter um, when he sold it because he was an older gentleman. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know, he was all about like you know he he'd write me letters and stuff, and he said, hey, you know, I had a good time with the car. I enjoyed it, but you know, he's like, I'm selling it and it's going to go to, uh, I think it went to, um, oh, what's that? Uh, um, the Netherlands? Hmm. I guess those, that area is big in the lowriders, huh. maybe now. Huh. Yeah, 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 it went to the Netherlands. So, um, there's guys on, on, on IG that'll tell me, like, they've seen it and stuff, but it's, yeah. it's like a myth. Like, you know, like, <laughs> it's weird. The guy that bought it, He's a car collector, apparently. And I think they, there's guys that are hardcore lowriders there. And they're like, dude, I seen your car once here. And the guy's never brought it out since then. It's like in his warehouse. It's right. just, he just has it. So he says he can have, a, you know, he has a lowrider. He has one of everything or whatever it may be. <clears throat> Which is kind of, uh, I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing for it. <laughs> Maybe it'll last longer, you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know? And, and the good thing is, is I think when you do things, when you do something like that with the car, then you tend to bring it out again. Uh, it's not old, you know? It's it's like still fresh. It's like, wow, you know, like, uh, especially if it's if it's a, it's a timeless type of car, right? Like, yeah. I know my dad, my, I feel that way about that car. You know, my dad's 49, kind of has that, feeling he rarely drives it but when you bring it out man it just gets a ton of attention like it's just one of those cars that it has it, it has a, a a good style and it's like you know he doesn't drive it often and when people see it they it's like man they want to see it you know like it like it, like it's like it's fresh like it's just been built or something yeah. you know they and they'll go oh, he'll say oh no i've had this car for you know who knows what 15 years or something you know <laughs> yeah so so are you building cars full-time now yeah 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 well uh, 
doing suspension work mainly. You yeah. know, my shop does uh, RJ. I, it's called RJ Hydraulics. Um, it's weird. Like I said, I started in airbags. Mm -hmm. And um, one day, I, I mean, I did a few hydraulic jobs. Um, like I like to, I like, I always like to say, um, the good thing is, is I think with, high, with air ride, you know, you deal with, uh, like hot rod people. Um, and there's not there, you know, I don't want to say hot rod people, but people that have like these certain types of cars that require a certain type of ride, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, they didn't want hydraulics because the air ride rides nice. Right. So you have guys with uh, Chevelles or, um, these, you know, LS cars, high profile cars that, ride good but they they're lowered and they have um four link suspensions they have um coil over suspensions you know things that are made to ride and go fast and ride good mm -hmm. so the with the point of with me starting an air ride and more or less like putting a lot tying a lot of that to hydraulics is kind of where i kind of like pride myself like that's where I try to be different from everybody else. Like, you know, anybody could slap in a set of hydraulics, um, a setup on a weekend or in an hour, mm -hmm. or, you know, you hear guys say, Oh, we, you know, we, back in the old days, we'd be, we'd be in and out of the guy's garage and we'd be driving by Saturday night. You know, we, we put it in there Friday night or something. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, but l look at the quality and then look at how it rode. How often were you fixing something? Or, or like a, a, a changing a hose, or right. did you make sure that your hose, hoses weren't going to rub on shit? No, they were just in there. At that time, they were just thinking about, I just want to be out cruising. It didn't matter what you did or where you were, but if you were out on a Saturday night in, on the strip, that's all that mattered. You were you made it, so you were right. good, right? And, and so um, with, with me tying air ride and just the things that I learned from it, to hydraulics i think that's the difference you know um the difference is is the 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 fasteners that are holding the hoses the 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 quality of the fasteners the room that you're giving it um you know it's it's kind of more like a high-end set of hydraulics you know that's we don't you know it's not a street set i mean even if it is a, a, a low grade set of pumps or something the approach the pumps aren't the problem it's the it's the approach that you take when you install it and you put it in right mm -hmm. so for me when i did my first one or a few i just did that because that's what felt right you know that's how it felt like that's how they should be installed or built because that's just what that's just what i would do for my own and so next thing i know once once i did one or two um that's how it happened it was like oh well you know, I'm doing air riding cars. I do one, one or two hydraulic setups. And the next thing I know, the guys are so happy with it. They tell their friends. Well, the next thing you know, I might turn into the hydraulic guy all of a sudden, yeah. you know. And it's funny because we we sit and laugh because we'll, we're at my shop. And we all will remember at one time when there was like base coat cars chopped. Uh, maybe rat rods, a couple of uh, hot rods or whatever, you know, in there. And, um, you know, white, big white wall tires and how even just the shop has changed. You know, it's like, you know, it's nothing that I asked for or, or, or tried to do. But next thing you know, you know, all that stuff's gone. And there's nothing but Impalas and 70s cars <laughs> and spoke wheels and hydraulic pumps and batteries and you know, it's like, man, j just the whole, uh, um, you know, how you say, like the, the space that we're in, it changed, you know, all of a sudden, you yeah. know, it's like, but it, it just changed out of just necessity or whatever you want to call it. Just, this is just what happened, you know? And, um, so like, you know, I, I don't even go to low rider car shows. I'm not, you know, I'm not like the, you know, I'm not building a hopper to promote my shop. Or, or my name or anything like that you know it's just it's it's just that all i'm doing is installs i don't have my own product line i don't know if i ever will um but it's it's the quality of the installs is what we what we try to do 
You know, we still do Air Ride. We still do Mustang 2s. We still do uh, four links and coilover setups for guys that have hot rods that don't. We've done mini tubs. We do um, like rot and rust repair. We do floor. We do like uh, like floor pans and stuff like that. We replaced a couple quarter panels. We don't do any kind of body work or bondo work. We do mostly just the fab work and then the stuff's gone. We do engine mount swaps and stuff like that, LS upgrades, mounts, but we don't do any kind of wiring. After that, the car goes to the, to the mechanics and stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, yeah, we just stick to the, just the, the rough fabrication parts. But when it comes to hydraulic stuff, now that's different. Yeah, we do, we'll do the whole thing. We do the whole installs, but um, we just try to keep our look like classic. We don't, you know, that's just my, that's my approach to doing it. Um, I don't, I don't like all that chrome that, you know, that, that cheap chrome that they try to do. I don't like all the hard lines that they try to do. I mean, in the end, like my friend said, it ends up looking like a shopping cart, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like, I go, it just, it's ugly, you know, it looks like a, a and I go, man, but I just try to keep everything basic we almost we almost try to take the approach of like where it looks factory like if the car maybe came with that as an option you know that's what mm -hmm. we try to do we we just try to keep it um like everything kind of just kind of monotone you know the the colors of the car uh we like to put the factory floor mats and stuff like that inside them make them look like i said like they they kind of come that way but yeah i know that yeah, the, the, the shop is full-time now. Yeah, it has been for... This is like my second year. My second year going full-time with the shop. And uh, it's been good. It's been busy. It's um, You know, I'm expanding now. I have an, a different shop I'm just uh, moving into. Um, uh, we're going to probably put a couple more people to work there. And then uh, because we just got to be able to handle more car. Summertime comes and then it gets busy. Especially because everybody wants to, you know... Like, they want to be out there on the street, you know, everybody in the winter time, nobody's thinking about that. Right. But summer comes, man, we're there till, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night, sometimes just trying to get people out on the street for the weekends, you know, but like I said, we don't do, we don't do the, we don't do the three wheeling. We don't do the hopping. If anybody comes in and asks for that kind of work, I send them other places. I know guys that do that. You know, my majority of my customers are guys that, they're looking for the ride quality, and that's what we try to do. We we got we got tricks and stuff that we know. We we got uh, like coil, different types of coil setups that we know to use. Um, most of the cars have shocks all the way around, front and back. A lot of low riders they don't they don't run shocks, any shocks. You know they're not into that. But um, so we just try to try to change the way I guess people have perceived older guys will perceive like hydraulics to be this thing that like you have to be wrenching on all the time and um, fixing or breaking a hose. You know, all we're doing is like making sure none of that will happen. You know, and it's like, it's been good because for the most part, I hardly have ones that come back where they say, oh, my trunk's leaking or I have oil everywhere. No, they're, they're usually, I come back and I'll look you know, a year later and the guy's, it's, everything's still there. All he's doing is charging the batteries, you know, no leaks, nothing major, nothing crazy happening. So that's, that's kind of like what, what I'm trying to do with, with the business with RJ Hydraulics or whatever, you know, just and have fun, <laughs> you know, for the most part, just, I enjoy it. I'm doing it for me. I, like I always tell people, you know, I'm doing the cars I do, I do for you. I'm not, I'm not like in it to be rich or you know anything like that I mean, we all do this kind of work because we're passionate about it you know and like i tell a customer i go man i'm doing this for you sometimes it's not even worth it for me to be out here but every car i get in there it's it's like you know it's like my own it's not like my own but you know we, we're looking at the underside of the car i'm almost like your doctor i know everything about when you, when you, I, sure. you know, I know the bottom of your car, I know the insides and outs, you know, and, and we're going to make it right. I take the approach like, you know, it's my car. If things, if I don't like the way something is or, or, if, or if I feel like making it better, well, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. 
and then honestly, you're going to pay for it, you know, like, sure. but you're going to be glad that I did it because it's what I would have done. I don't go out of my way to break your wallet or anything like that. You know, I just want to take that extra step to make sure that your car's not coming back. You know, my, you know, you're, you're just going to drive it and be on the street and not worry about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, I, I'm sure with anybody that's, I hope that's yeah. how they, you know, your mechanic or anybody else, you know, don't, don't want you coming back. If, if I want, if you're going to come back, it's because I want you to bring me another car. Right. Not because I want to see the same one, you know, over and over. Right. Right. So. Yeah. That, I really respect that. I, if your name's on it, like, yeah, it doesn't really matter if, if your customer doesn't know what they need. Yeah. It, it as the, the person designing yeah, your system, yeah. you need to convince yeah. them that I'm doing this. This is the way it's done. If you don't want that done. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That, someone else. And that's the kind of relationship that I'm building with my customers. Yeah. Like, um, I don't, I don't really have a website or like I said, I'm not selling product and I'm busy because of these people. Right. I, I do them. I, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I'm the quality is there. And they see that and they know they can trust me. So they're telling their friends, right? You know, and it's like, that's the whole thing. That's that's the bad thing about probably the hydraulic industry that I really don't know nothing about. I know that there's a lot of politics involved. There's these, you know, shops from down south, shops from up here. Um, that's that's all to me. I don't even care about any of that. That's not, I'm not, I'm not that guy. I'm not, I'm not here, like I said, I don't even go to, lowrider sanctioned car shows i don't go to um the you know 90 percent of the time i'm not impressed you know yeah. so it's very hard to to impress me i don't know why but i feel like i've seen everything done and i've seen it changed and i i appreciate everybody's cars for what they do but i, I like my stuff just classic and simple you know like to me you take a stock chevy keep it that way and and and, and it's laid on the ground or or put hydraulics in it and have the right wheels and tires set up on it and that's that's really all you need to do um at that point i think it's the execution that's what i now that is what i appreciate so you could take the same car and put them side by side do the same thing to me it's the it's how you executed it and how you did it and the quality right that's now what i notice you know so to me, like I said, I don't really need to see a crazy paint job. I don't need to see, I mean, like I said, I would love to see something that I haven't seen before that, you know, but sometimes uh, people go too far trying to change things, right? That are like trying to experiment or step out of the box. I don't want to see everything that's done 10 times either, but like, you know, um, like I said, it's it's just about how you execute it. You know, you could do the things that people have done. I mean, how many candy apple red cars is there? But like, there'll be that one that you'll see and you'll just be like, damn, that, that shit is badass. Like, you know, the guy put the right color, you know, just the approach and the, you know, the color on a certain car or whatever, you know, but you know, I, I like I said, I guess I, I look at everything and I kind of like, like I instantly like, uh, 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 like diagnose it tear it apart like but i can do it like in 10 seconds and be yeah. like no you know like i could you know it's just i don't know it's coming at it from a different perspective yeah you know just exactly like it, it it's just yeah so but um yeah the, the shop is doing good so this summer i think it's gonna be a big a busy summer too yeah i can foresee it already we have a lot a lot of we have a lot of stuff on the books right now backed up that are just waiting. So it's going to be a lot of long nights, but you know what? I enjoy it. Like you said before, that's, it's our, it's my passion. I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else, you know, like I've already did the, 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 the nine to five or the, you know, the commute and, uh, the, the union job. I did all that, man. And, uh, it's kind of like my second take at, at life. I think, you know, like yeah. it's time to, approach it with a different view and see see where it goes you know but i think since i've done this you know it's like one of those things where it's like well we i think it's opened my eyes to the whole purpose you know like 
other than what we've been taught, you know, like, hey, you got to go to work, you got to make money, you got to come home, you get old, your kids grow up, and that's it. You know, it's like, I felt like the first, my first approach was that approach, you know, at life. And it's like, man, this is the, it's too stagnant. It's not going anywhere. This is like, yeah. you know, I need to challenge myself. And the only way to challenge yourself is to, to, to do it, you know, and take that step. You'll learn a lot about yourself when you do, you know. But I've never, I, I wasn't taught that, you know, and, uh, you know, it's like, you know, so it's like, okay, I see now what people mean by, you know, what, you know, it's like, you know, as long as you're living and it's, we're here to have a good time and me, that shop is, that's, that's my good time, man. Like, I, like I said, I'll go extra mile on people's cars, whether or not they pay for it, because I feel like that's what that card that's what they deserve that customer deserves you know like i wouldn't i wouldn't want to pay I, I wouldn't want to charge my customers anything that i wouldn't want to pay for that's how i do it you know people ask me all the time oh like well what's the price well you know don't worry we're, we're gonna do it we, we charge by the hour for the most part but you know you're gonna get a, a good quality work you know like you're gonna get what, what anybody would want what we would want for our own cars you know so and i'm pretty picky when it comes to a lot of that stuff i know like my buddy damon he works for me he's he's noticed that he, he knows he's like oh no don't do that you know you're gonna end up changing it because rj ain't gonna like it <laughs> you know so anything like that do you have another mm -hmm. uh, car in the works you want to talk about um you know what no, not right now. <laughs> I, you know, my car is always just kind of like, they kind of come out of nowhere. Yeah. But when they do, like, I already, like, I already know where I'm going with them. You know, I, like, I'll, right. I, I don't, no, I, just, I don't usually search for a car or like, like, I know some people will say, oh, I want a 55 Chevy. I'm going to go find one. Yeah. Or I want a Merc. I'm going to go find one. Right. Like, now when I see it, you know, the car usually comes to me. Yeah. And same. Then, I, then from there, we just... My last... I got a, a 59 Apache from my neighbor across the street when he passed away. I bought it from his kids. Yeah. It's like, I don't need another car. But I've, I've had dreams about driving like a 58, 59 Apache oh, yeah, since yeah. like forever. I don't know. Just like white, yeah. white interior, basically stock, but on the ground. Shiny wood with chrome straps in the oh, bed. Yeah. You hear the chains clicking on the tailgate yeah I always yeah. wanted that it yeah. was right there and it's like it's a neighborhood car like people come by my house like hey you working on bill's truck he used to take me to the dump in that thing wow. back in the 80s that's crazy yeah he was like a bill was he was, the original owner he bought it in the 70s i mm. think yeah um, we were talking about fixing it up right right before he passed away what year did you say it's a 59 59 yeah, yeah. it's yeah. all stock yeah. beat the hell but it was yeah. like his uh it was his truck when he was a union welder, and then it was his dump run truck for the rest of his life. That's sick. Half ton, right? A uh, half ton, yeah. Uh, yeah. Short bed? Like Short step bed. side or fleet side? Uh, fleet side. Fleet Short side, bed. those are sick. Yeah, fleet sides are nice. I had a, a step side, 55, yeah. one of my first ones. I don't know if you remember seeing that. It was like a white truck. Um, pretty sick, laid on the ground. Yeah. Used to have a lot of fun in that truck, man. Like it, it was one of the first. 55s that i know of that had that flat out laid stance yeah yeah i think i did that one probably in oh 2000 and maybe like 2001 or something like that huh. no yeah about 2001 or two yeah my uh, uh it was just like a simple white truck clean but it i wanted it laying on the ground and it had a camaro clip so it was easy to do it was bagged yeah. four length and stuff I think I was like one of the first trucks or cars I four linked on my own. And then I remember um, the car when I laid it out, the uh, Camaro clip, whoever put it in, they did it pretty good because I bought it with the clip on it. But um, in those, what you do is when you, they kind of have this step in the frame and some guys will either put them on and then the suspension is too low mm -hmm. if they're trying to drive like a statically dropped truck. They'll put too much arc. They'll use too much of the arch. And then some guys will line up it like straight with the old frame. And then it has like, it doesn't lay at all. It looks stock like it's high. Mm -hmm. 
But anyways, this truck, it, I think they had it just right. But when I laid it out, the run, the door, right under the door, the rocker was like a half inch from hitting the ground, like where the rocker was on the ground. So I actually took the the cross member and then I pancaked the cross member on the on the Camaro clip. And then I took like a big plate and then welded it to the bottom. And then it just gave me that extra half inch. But at the time, like like I said, I was pretty young. I was like maybe 21 or something like that. And But it, uh, that thing laid all the way on the ground. The, the, and then I, yeah, it was a good truck. Went to a couple shows, won some awards with it or whatever. Nothing crazy, but it was fun. Like we used to drive that. That truck had like a, at that time, you know, having a 700 R4 overdrive was a big deal and stuff like that um but man we used to i used to drive fly down 880 on the freeway and with that thing like on the ground scraping like pretty much like like at like 80 miles an hour you know like in the fast commute lane and people the thing looked like it was floating like just skating across the, the highway you know but uh that was probably yeah that was a, that was a nice truck those are badass trucks man yeah it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I appreciate it. Like I said, um, you know, it's just uh, I listened to a couple of your shows, you know, because I honestly, I never had because sure. I didn't have, um, like, the first time I logged on, it took me to, like, some iTunes thing, and right. I didn't have that. Right. And then my wife was like, oh, no, you don't need that for Android. Just go to, like, this, um, I don't forget what it's called, but it's like a blog lovers or something it's called like i think it's listed everywhere but. yeah and then i was able to listen then like one night i like binge listening to like <laughs> till i fell asleep you know what i mean i was like um but they're good i, I, I like them man this is like you know it's fucking cool because obviously all the people that you interview are the people that either i don't i mean i don't know them all but everything they do is what i care about you know what i mean like oh that's you know, it's a it's a car guy's blog or whatever. You know, it's it's, well, yeah. it's uh, good to hear. I, yeah. You know, I used to try to write a lot. I, I like writing, and I really enjoyed it when I had time. But now that I don't, it's so much nicer to just like hit record, have a conversation, and just put it out. Yeah, no, like I don't have to. It's dope because like, who if if you don't do this, like nobody's recording our history or whatever. That you know, we're not the inventors of this, but. You know, we we tend to forget to record because everything's on social media now. Yeah. There, we don't take pictures because everything's instantly there, right? You yeah. know, all these guys from the fifties and the sixties and the seventies, we have all this stuff because they had to use like physical evidence. They had to take a photo, have it printed, whatever, right? We do this stuff and we instantaneously think it's always going to be there. Right. Oh, boom! It's now it's somewhere on the web. I'll find it later or like, you know what I'm saying? For sure. But we actually have to be careful and make sure that we do log this stuff because, for one, I've lost phone chips out of my phones or, you know, yeah. backups. And I have years of photos that I, I don't ever get back or can't find. You know what I mean? And, like, I was driving to the Grand Canyon and I broke my phone halfway to Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had, I had a work phone. We made it. We made it work, but it was, fuck, I yeah. would have missed, I wouldn't have recorded any of that if, like, if yeah. I was just relying on the phone. Yeah, and, and I mean, and for the most part, you know, you, your memory is what you want to have. Sure, but, the memory's uh, fading, though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> mine's been gone, but definitely, you know, just recorded things. Like I told you, I don't take pictures. Not that I don't want to, but because for me, it's it's this, like, it's nothing it's it's every day it's my life yeah. it's what i do right somebody else probably wishes i would take pictures like damn it why doesn't that guy just stop to take some photos <laughs> it only takes a second right? right but i'm i'm not i'm not thinking about it like that right this is i'm just moving on and, and doing doing what i do all the time I, so it's good that what i'm getting at is with your it's everybody come for you to be able to come and then kind of you know, kind of like uh, uh, ask questions and get us to like make us think again about some of the shit we did in the past. Not just me, but uh, eSpace Speed and, and like Alex and, um, you know, everybody, you know, all, all the biker guys, you know, like Max and all those guys that, you, you know, you have 
that's cool shit because, you know, you got to have it somewhere. Somebody's got to do it. But a lot of guys aren't doing it, you know? Yeah. But, well, thank you. Yeah. That means a lot. Sure. Hell yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to hit stop so I don't lose this. I'm always paranoid that it's just not going to record. All right. There it is. Episode 22. Thank you so much for listening. Ah. How cool, right? That was so much fun. Those cars that we talked about mean the world to me. So it was endlessly fascinating to hear how they came to be. And I hope you guys did get to. But that's it for now. Uh, Hopefully I'll get you guys another one soon. Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time.